Okay, starting up for today's episode. Let's give it a second to see if it actually kind of goes and people start piling in. Okay. Looks like it's working. Let's see if it actually kind of people can hear me. We'll let the wait for a couple of people to join in before we start going a little bit further. How's it going, guys? If you could chat or drop a thing in the chat to see if everything's working. Sure everything's going along before I get going too further. How's it going, Craig? Thanks for joining today. Hopefully you're having a good day. Anybody else besides Craig showing up so far? I'm going to give him another couple minutes, then I'll get started on things. <clears throat> and of course, just ask any questions. Why the question, Gustavo? Double question mark. Hey Bray, how's it going? Hey Chelsea, how's it going? Thanks for joining. Hopefully you're doing pretty good. Not working too hard. Ah, pretty good. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Okay, I want to show you guys a few things before I get kind of started. You can actually find my work at uh, bbriley.com. On that uh, site, I actually have a shop of a few kits that you can purchase in case you guys are interested. Also, my Instagram is going to be uh, bbriley underscore art after Instagram.com. And my art station is just going to be artstation.com forward slash spark. I also have recently joined a good group of guys, James Kane and Martin Verhoeven for Grimm. And you can find right now uh, Instagram.com. We are Grimm. We have some things going along. Our site should be launching here pretty soon. Um, as I'll show you, this is actually one of the kits from James Kane that we'll be selling on the site pretty soon. This is the Lighthouse Keeper. It's about four and a half inches tall. Solid resin. We also, from Graham, are going to be having the Cthulhu piece that Martin Verhoeven did. It's also going to be four and a half inches tall. We're still deciding some of the price that will go with the launch, but I just wanted to show you guys something. Hopefully, every you guys can hear me too. Uh, for Grim, I actually did this Aqualion. This is one of my creatures. This is 6.2 inches solid resin as well, in case you guys are interested in that one. And then here's another piece. I also did the shovel. Thanks, Bray. Appreciate it. Thank you, Gustavo. So this one is also the same height as Aqualion, so this is my shovel piece. You guys actually notice up on the, uh, the screen, I did like a little animated tab of some of the different kits I have available up on the site. In case you're interested, at bbriley.com, my shop, and then the information's up there as well, along with Grimm, and this is going to be our website when it launches. So, um, okay, we got about 50 or so people, so let's go ahead and get started for today. Uh, hopefully everybody's doing pretty good <clears throat> and nothing else is going on. Um, again, I'm going to continue along with what I did before with the scan data head. Um, but I'm going to, you know, pretty much create a new creature off of it. As I said, I'm kind of going off the fact that it's just like traditional artists built off an actor. I'm going to use some of the facial features and details to kind of help you guys see creatures or items and things to kind of help 
with anatomy, those are a little bit less familiar with it, and also to sit there and just, you know, kind of create just for fun, because that's what art's supposed to be. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll have some success, but again, if I, if I don't, then it's just on video. <laughs> so, um, so let's go ahead and just close that one. And we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to show today. Uh, I've been showing you just on one of the, the scans of the heads, just kind of going from that. I'm going to actually do a, a couple different techniques that I kind of do as well. Um, you know, starting from this first head, <clears throat> I broke it down into making sure that I uh, did a dynamesh on it. I did it symmetrical so I can actually sculpt on things. And then I uh, did a zebra remesher so I could actually have go up and down levels. And then, of course, I did the other flip of the head. And I this is the one I used for the first demo and uh, I think the, the third one to kind of show you guys to do some stuff. Uh, thank you, Craig. Thank you, Will. I appreciate it. Um, how's it going, Seagull? And I apologize if I miss you guys in some of the chat kind of stuff. So um, I'm going to just kind of start building off um, and I'm pretty much going to choose one as the upper head uh, to start from and one as the bottom head. Some of the different shapes that I'm going to kind of see on this thing. So um, hopefully we'll have some good success. So let me go ahead and get started. Um, if you guys have any questions, please just go ahead and you know drop me a line uh, in the chat. I'll try to catch it. We don't have to necessarily stay within what I was planning to do, but um, I at least wanted to kind of get some things going on. So again, since I broke this up that it's make it symmetrical, of course I turn on X by doing symmetry. I'm going to again use just basic brushes, um, my standard, my move, flatten, uh, pinch, gray, uh, clay, in flat, and my damn standard. I pretty much have them set up to my keyboards, which you can find, you know, instructions on how to do that. Uh, hotkeying and then just pretty much keep it simple for those of you guys who are kind of new and even advanced just to kind of you know to go more towards thinking so on this character when I actually had it split if you see the difference between the two head I see this one bulbing up more where this one actually has more of kind of like a the wider jaw I actually kind of like some of that jaw line so I'm going to kind of go down my layers and I'm going to kind of play with um, uh, just trying to make that going off of that one so I'm going to just push and pull this out, just concentrating on just some of the jaw. Let's go ahead and just, and I'm not really concentrating on the nose or anything else. Just like we talked before, getting some of the shapes out to make something alien or kind of go off of, we're going to be using the elements from the scan data face, um, the folds and everything later, but right now I'm just looking for forms. I'm looking for shapes that I think I might kind of like. And again, I'm not going to be paying attention to the top of his head <clears throat> because right now I'm just going to concentrate on the lower half and then bring in the other head to start playing with those shapes. That allows me to sit there and do a few different things. Um, also, in my background, I have three dogs that uh, will probably just start barking, but I have my handy, what is that? Handy dandy spray bottle that will actually um, help shut them up. <laughs> so I apologize in advance if any of them kind of start to freak out because uh, of anything they have a tendency to do. But um, So right now I'm just gonna kind of go and at the bottom of the head, I'm going to, I am going to use his ears. Uh, I'm not going to kind of take away his ears um, like I did in the last piece, but I'm going to probably just kind of go with the sweep of the face. I'm going to kind of try to make it kind of a little bit more uh, where I don't see him from the front necessarily, just maybe just a hint of it. But from the side, I'm going to kind of use it as um, where you might kind of follow some of what I'm doing for this. I'm, I'm looking at this line right here and I'm just trying to carry it up to the back of the head. So, let's see. Any questions? I'm trying to situate my stuff a little bit better. So on here, I'm just going to start shaping out some things, maybe make his neck a little bit in not too extreme and just concentrate on some of this jaw while I have that masked. And let's see. 
I'm going to kind of pull back his nose. I'm not concentrating on his nose. I'm concentrating on more of his mouth. Okay. And I'm just doing this really quickly, flattening out a few of those shapes. Okay. I'm just play, <clears throat> playing with a few things. How's it going, Julian? Thank you for joining us today. So now that I have that, sort of like I see secondary jowl section along that lines of this guy right here. Again, I wanted to take away some of this one. So now that I have this kind of face, you know, kind of a Voldemort, anytime you kind of take out the nose, it's kind of like a Harry Potter Voldemort kind of thing, even though I'm not supposed to mention his name. Um, but that's like a, a good start. I took out one aspect of it of the human facial features so we're again we're dealing with like hearing sense of you know smell sight you know taste uh, once you kind of take out one of those things it kind of changes it i'm going to kind of bring in the upper face here i'm going to concentrate but i'm going to keep that lower face intermixed okay because i want to sit there and and now take a look at what i can kind of do with this one as you see by pulling out that jaw even though i had this as a, a different symmetrical face i have it buried so i'm going to be intermixing the two um, concentrating it. Again, I already had that neck kind of started, so I'm just going to kind of pull in this neck. I'm going to go down my layers a little bit. I'm just going to bury it. But I might be able to kind of use this. I can pull this shape in and start taking a look. Let, let's say if I wanted to see what a little bit fatter ridge back, you know, um, I can kind of start taking a look at that or just pull this back in and I'm concentrating in the nose. Uh, with this one, I think I want to kind of go exaggerating uh, to to exaggerate this. So I'm going to kind of maybe let's just take I'm going to take away his ears too. I don't need his ears on here because I already got it from the, the bottom. So I'm going to concentrate on some of the facial features and stuff like that. And what do I what do I want to do with it? Uh, I don't like that nose, so to speak. But I'm going to kind of probably pull this nose in um, to intermix and play with with that little shape. Maybe. And hell, let's just kind of let's start pulling it up. Because I have some of the eyes kind of going from that sweep. I kind of like some of like the, the thin of the nose down here, but maybe it starts to because it goes up. Then I kind of have this shape going right there. And I can kind of use that to sweep and pull. And I'm going to probably build this as a base for kind of where the eye is going to set up. So I'm thinking he's going to probably have some pretty large eyes or some weird eyes and stuff like that. So I need to kind of maybe start to think about separating the two faces as is. Um, do some shapes. And again, by having the two separate heads entirely, I can get some pretty wacky creature going on. If I don't like this, or if I like this certain snapshot or this certain direction, then I can kind of change it. Now, as you see right here, the bottom, I'm starting to get in there. That's the eyebrows. Now, I could I could go, well, I'm going to use this as like some weird little extra nostril or whatever, or, you know, part of the ear, uh, eye duct that I can actually just kind of bring in and start playing with it. And do I like that? Not at the moment, but I can always just push and pull once I get some things going um, to actually see what's working and look for those happy accidents. No, I definitely want to concentrate on that this is going to be more of the upper aspect of the head. So let's go ahead and let's make this nose bridge. And again, that so that little extra nose coming out of there could be like a, a sharpness of, of the, uh, the bone coming out of it or whatever. Uh, um, <clears throat> how's it going, Kevin? Thank you for joining. So... And again, I'm just pushing back and forth. I'm pulling, I'm looking. Um, and I'm gonna go up just a little bit. I think I might bring out these eyes just a little bit. I mean, by having them closed, I kind of had like this little peaceful stuff, but I think I wanna kind of use that eye socket of, you know, his eyelids put together and I'm gonna kind of use them as kind of really big sections to where his eye can kind of sit and I'm kind of trying to take a look at bringing that down <laughs> see a pussycat 
Yeah. I mean, you'll you'll start you'll start seeing a lot of different shapes, and this is the this is where you kind of go, okay, this is working, this isn't working. Um, I like this, I don't like that. This is part of where I was trying to help you guys. You know, some of the process that I kind of use to if I'm having you know a little bit of a stalemate on thinking of creatures or I'm not liking something that's kind of going on, I can just <clears throat> make a copy. <coughs> Sorry guys, uh, make a copy of what I'm doing and go, yeah. Let's not go that direction, maybe do this one. Um, so I think I do like that eye section, so I'm going to define it out just a little bit more. And once I start getting a few different interesting parts to it, then I can kind of keep developing out that little section. I'm going to go back down, and I kind of, I think I want to make, I don't like this little ball. This is starting to look like, you know, breasts coming out. Um, so I'm going to kind of, Kind of make them a little bit more, I think, frog. I'm going to pronounce this one out a little bit. Any questions? Sorry. Kind of pull this back a little bit. And since I already have that ear set up from the below, I'm actually having a nice division of kind of like this is where the ear is going to be, this is where, you know, the, the jawline hits it, and the ear is kind of buried in there, but then I can kind of, you know, push and pull around without masking and inflating them, just kind of finding those forms. Maybe I might pull this back a little bit. And then it kind of has like a nice little crease that I can kind of, you know, pull back here. I think I need to make this um, maybe... And again, that, that neck section down here, like I can I can either separate this and use this as a separate back neck muscle that's kind of like poppy, you know, popping out from that little section. And then we have the cranium, you know, that I can kind of just quickly separate. And, and the cool thing about once you kind of get some of these shapes kind of going, you can always just merge, you know, visible, redynamesh it, clean it up and go through. And then, you know, you have a monster to kind of go as you're kind of cleaning up. Um, it's pretty much what I do a lot of times. So I'm going to balance out the shape of this head a little bit more. The, um, you know, I think the balance, the, this is kind of a straight, but it's kind of a bow. I think I want to kind of bring out this little section a little bit more to kind of bury that eye socket in. And again, you need to kind of rotate your, your characters a lot, you know, t take a look at all different sides don't just just sit there and you know it's great if you have a successful front view but if you're not really going to have that success carry around your forms a lot then it kind of breaks down it's not very uh you know you can't just have a creature that you're going to be put into a games or movies or whatever and just have it be cool from you know just have them from this shot only you know what i mean um so i think i'm going to i start to see this shape start to happen so I think I'm going to kind of maybe build out some form so maybe he's got um, kind of like an interesting shape that kind of starts to balance up from here and kind of will go around how's it going me how are you doing today thank you very much for joining I appreciate you guys actually taking the time out of your day to, to stop by and see what I'm doing Now that I have these, these eyes kind of going, um, I need to let me go back. Let me go up a, a level. I need to kind of get an eye, eyeball in there to kind of help define some of my shapes. I got some things kind of going, so I'm just going to add just a regular sphere. Use my move tool. push it out a little bit now here's the thing just be, this is a nice round sphere um, just because you have that doesn't mean like you can't manipulate the eyeball a little bit which I might kind of want to you know have it kind of be like this little weird almost like it's kind of going up back into the head a little bit on uh, the design so it's sort of kind of maybe just a little bit an abnormal shape itself so it kind of comes out like an egg 
um, you know, and I'm just going to go to my subtool master. Oops. Subtool master, just mirror that sucker and just merge it into one. And now I've lost this position, so I'm going to turn off so I can go back to my symmetry. So all I did is I reset that pivot over to it. So, hey Jesse, thanks for showing up, man. Appreciate it. So now that I have those eyeballs in there and sort of some of, you know, some of the details that I kind of wanted to find the face, I'm going to go back to here and kind of bring up these eyes a little bit. Um, going to go up a level. And I'm using the in-flat to kind of build up some structure here. So I think I want to kind of have it like, kind of sits back down, has that nice little fold kind of happening kind of thing, but maybe, maybe I have that fold and... I'm going to turn it, turn it around to kind of give this little, like a nose bridge in here. <clears throat> I actually see a lot of these leading your eye up. I don't like this little indentation. Um, I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to kind of bring in the nose and make it a little bit sharper, kind of interesting shape. Maybe bring these down. And remember, this was sort of like the nose. From that one guy, but I'm, I'm totally manipulating how that kind of works. Um, and I'm going to kind of maybe just say it's a, sort of like a different flesh piece from this section. So maybe it's two parts of the face, you know, it's, it's got a heavier fold to it. So, and easily I could do this by going back in here and, and now just start defining out. So I want to kind of maybe go up a little bit level and I'll start defining out some of that shape. Um, you know, I'm seeing the mouth from underneath this guy, so let me go ahead and push that back entirely. Okay. And then now, go back into here, I'm going to push back in that nose, and kind of use this, and then maybe that indentation I was having there, I just pick it back up here, almost like the teardrop, and let's just go ahead and define this mouth and let's droop it down a little bit. I'm just using the move tool to push and pull back in and let's go ahead and I like how that jaw is kind of the chin is kind of poking out kind of thing but let's go ahead and separate it. So think of you know using parts of whatever you have started but kind of think of things to separate. Having, having separate layers of skin within skin or having like it's almost kind of a layer um, makes it more alien because ours is just pretty much a normal flat skin over top of all of our muscle and bone. So having layers of that or different things come into it kind of turns it into the oddity and turns it into the kind of weird that separates. Yeah, there is some grounding of anatomy, but it's different. So and that's kind of like a good way to kind of think of some of your your. Um, creatures, you know what I mean? It's, uh, you're relying on certain things, but not keeping exclusively to those. So, let's see, I'm going to kind of, then I might play up some of the jawline, and, and I might, I'm going to pick up this, because I see this little line kind of coming in from the previous, uh, the top of the head, and I, I just want to carry it, like, this is like a muscle kind of going through, and but it's leading your eye, you know what I mean? It's kind of leading your eye around it, and you can kind of start kind of burying and once I have that one maybe then I can kind of say okay well from the front here I have this long neck so I want to angle your eye down and again I've talked before because especially with this character because he was kind of old he has a lot of those interesting fat folds or the age folds let's go ahead and just make that um, again bring it back up because we have it all coming down here but you know we need to lead it back in and up so either we just start one here or else we could just go in the internal line of the neck and then pick this up here and and then maybe connect um, this little section here so just fun shapes just try to just try to think of different different shapes um, I'm not really liking the size of the like this head is looking a little bit either I can I think I need to make this a lot bigger like I need to really emphasize um, Get that a little bit so the jaw is at least 
the less important part of it. And let me just bury this back down. So I'm keeping with what I actually had, but I'm just going to kind of, I can easily just say, okay, what was working, what was bothering me. So I'm actually kind of liking that shape a little bit more, like kind of from the side. Bring out the, let's just try these, bring them out a little bit more. So we're really emphasizing more of the depth. Now, once we've done that, then of course, just bring these That, that sweep. I want to kind of emphasize this angle. I think I kind of don't, I want to do maybe like a teardrop that's kind of reversing the, you know, as we have it in the eyeballs right here, you have it to where, you know, the tear duct and that the angle in that direction. So I want to kind of maybe flip that around. Uh, I'm using what the anatomy is again, but I'm going to kind of probably just say, okay, it's going to come up from here. Let's make that even. And if I'm going to define this. <clears throat> And then, you know, I can kind of use that to kind of start playing with shapes and maybe, you know, get a couple of these interesting folds. Can we dry around? I now have that little indentation around. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and so I'm going to play out that and kind of bring this. So I'm kind of building that interesting breakdown of the eye. I'm creating the upper and outer eyelids and seeing what I can create from that. Let me go up a layer to actually start kind of seeing what I want to do. Um, let's see. I say his eyes are just awesome. Maybe they are just for reference, so you will change them. Uh, what is it? Just for reference, so you'll change it. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, what I'm developing, uh, me, I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm playing around. I'm seeing what's going to work or not. And so, some, some of these things might work, kind of work. I might not like it to be like in here. I kind of, maybe I might want to bring out more of, like he has one big eyelid. Like it's like it's part of this big mass, and then it kind of insets. So, and from the side of the head, you know, you kind of have some. So this becomes one big section to kind of play with. I mean, it's, and then it kind of sweeps back into the, to the head. It doesn't, you can keep playing with this um, and seeing what's kind of working. I'm kind of liking some of the things kind of going on. Maybe I, I don't really like the thickness of this nose. So I'm going to kind of probably bring this in even sharper and smaller because I want to sit there and probably define out some of the shapes of the eye a little bit more. So I'm going to, I like some of the sweep. I might kind of do an extra nostril in here, kind of like or a breakdown of like shapes up. Kind of lead your eye up, and then, and then I want to kind of probably turn it from. Let's get some of these directional lines kind of going to kind of help some of the forms. Now right here, it's like this. smooth that out so let's go ahead and find this transition part so I, I have that kind of going there I might kind of then just kind of transition it to where it's kind of folds even further out in the eye um, and his eyebrows are maybe up here a little bit more That's not looking too bad. I'm going to probably now start working, defining out some details on his bottom jaw. Again, I'm working back and forth on both just to sit there and kind of, you know, see what's working. Maybe I might, now since I had that separation where that fold goes, um, I can actually start building up some of those interesting shapes and sweeps that are kind of going around the face. Um, this right here is kind of separated, so I'm going to 
probably use that to tie around and over down into the face. And then I can kind of play with that shape a little bit more. Go ahead and bury that back. And so what I'll do is that I'm trying to hide some of this detail between the two. You know, I'm just kind of blending them together by shape. So you, you, when I go to here, I, I don't see a lot of that. You know, it's separate. It's two separate meshes, but I'm kind of like allowing that to sit there and just kind of blend visually. So. I just might push this back a little bit. Method of making arms. Um, Just pretty much getting like sometimes just getting a cylinder and just knocking it out. I, I have different anatomy things that I've built over the years, so a lot of times I kind of will grab those arm or push or pull from a different creature to kind of speed up things. And if I'm looking for, um, you know, if I already kind of detail out some of the the hands and the arms and everything like that, I kind of just will bring those back in and then try different things like uh, I, I want my creatures if I, uh, does it look cool where I had the finger a little bit elongated but then I do a lily pad on the bottom or uh, extra knuckle to the middle of the range to um, really emphasize that you know claw or the, the silhouette or the shape of, of that object I mean it's it's kind of um, that's a cool thing once you start kind of getting um, a few things going it's a lot easier to kind of uh, pull from previous things you did and then keep building on to it. Uh, I think I want to make this just a little bit, bring this up a little bit. Just to kind of give them like where the lip of, maybe not that much, but. Okay, let me define out some of this eye. Oops. But even if you use, you know, anatomy from something previously, you just make sure that you're kind of, you know, you're reworking it, learning from it, and, you know, continue from there. Okay, so I'm going to kind of do some detailing work to his eye section here, which will help, I think, get, because I'm trying to figure out, like, what I want to do. I think I want to kind of build up a couple different layers, kind of like he's got quite a few that will kind of, um, so it's almost kind of his wrinkles or his, or maybe these kind of are, you know, think like maybe they're telescoping, you know, it's a telescopic eye where it kind of comes out and kind of folds like an accordion on itself. So why monster? Um, I enjoy monsters <laughs> to, to be quite honest. Um, I mean, there's uh, to create something, you know, that might be kind of scary or interesting or new. Um, I don't know. I just think it's kind of it's a fun thing to do. So, because I mean, anatomy, you're kind of you know, a realistic anatomy, you're kind of stuck to, you know, what everybody, you know, pretty much knows. Uh, if the if you're doing a human character and it doesn't look quite like a human, then you're kind of, it's, you know, people get it. But doing a monster, you can kind of play, and it's whatever you want to bring to the board. You know, it's whatever you want to sit there and design. So I think that's just a lot more fun. Okay, I'm going to kind of probably play with some of these shapes a little bit. And I think I might... I'm playing with these a lot of these folds that we're kind of creating in the from the actor's head. Kind of like the crow's feet that he had. And I'm trying to... 
Yeah, I think that's kind of working. So he's kind of almost kind of, you know, think about telescopic heads or whatever. You know, it's like I'm kind of building up that extra layers of flesh and fat that just kind of have to go somewhere. But so, you know, when it's kind of condensed, they kind of, it's, it's splailing out. So maybe this character, when he has to look, his eyes can now come out and look around and all that flesh that's bunched up now will actually stretch out to whatever it's extending. So again, I'm trying to, when I'm creating, you know, sometimes if, you know, having like a, if you're stuck on something, just having like a little bit of story or you're just thinking about different ideas, um, once you have that story, you kind of think, yeah, that works. And yeah, that might kind of be interesting. And I could kind of probably do a little bit of like flesh forwards down here. I say asking questions a lot, but no, you guys, seriously, ask questions. It's part of, I've been teaching for quite a while, and it's just like, to me, um, you know, there is no, like I make a joke, is that there's never a stupid question, unless you ask the same one for the four times, um, because then that's just rude, you're not paying attention. But, I mean, it's, that's what we're here for, where, you know, I'm, I'm doing this one to kind of help um, anybody that's interested, and not saying my process is the right way to go, it's just my process that I wanted to share with you guys. So, if it helps, great. You know, but if you don't ask the questions you're stuck to, it's like going to the doctor and and he never you never tell him about your broken knee and then you you know you walk out there with you know a bandage on your thumb. It's kind of uh, you know he has to know what you're you know thinking uh, before to get, you know help you with anything. And not saying I'm as important as a doctor, but just that's the thing. You guys are here. If I can help, great. Um, but I have no clue what you're you're thinking. Um, I have trouble figuring out what my wife is thinking. So. <laughs> And that's important. So, um, PC specs, uh, basically, uh, KBI thinks is, you know, a, just something good. Good amount of RAM, 32 gigs above. Um, you don't need a high end gaming rig for ZBrush. It does great with a lot of stuff. It's, um, but having good RAM and a good vid card, you know, generally, it's, um, don't go to the highest end specs. That's going to break the bank on you for a gaming spec, but, a nice general one with you know RAM and uh, a vid card will go very far. So and also a lot of space uh, for you know like get like a SD drive, a solid state drive for your main, so you can actually just kind of pull things up quickly, open up programs quickly. Um, you know and if it just just don't break you know just don't break the bank on something because it's the technology is like tomorrow going to be obsolete. I mean it's, that's just the way things go, and I. The, what I'm working on right now is um, like a year and a half years old. So thank you, Candy. Even I appreciate it. Yeah, like mortar, like you know, 16. He went to the, the I, I think, which is 32 gigs is a lot. It's it, that's the more RAM you have, the better for the brain, you know, to deal with. So I'm gonna shrink these down. I'm not really. I want them to be there, but I don't want them to be, there, you know, too much of the eye. So by shrinking these down, that is going to help me kind of define that they're important, they're there, but now I'm going to stretch these out just a little, kind of make them insect. By having that little angle, that makes them a little bit more insect. Um, bring this in just a little. And since I made that head a little bit bigger, I'm going to bring these out and back. And now that that big head is coming over, I'm just going to kind of make it look like the ear is kind of pointing down and there's a little bit of a weight to it. We start, we see a little bit of the creature from the side, not too, it's getting kind of elvish. So I'm going to bring that back. So again, I'm kind of looking at the, you know, what, oops, what's defined or not. I'm gonna kind of not quite liking how sharp it is. I want it to kind of balance against this shape up here. And once I have that, let me go ahead and bring that in. Because what I'll do is I'll just have that fold kind of be part of the eye. Kind of like it's going to be buried in there, so it's all kind of coalescing down in there. It's a word. So 
want to lead your eye up and around. Let's make that just a little. Okay, let me. Since I'm burying that eye a little bit, I'm going to probably give it a little more of a deeper socket and define. This eye bridge. Uh, why do I sculpt basically the same kind of alien head? Well, I didn't think this was the same basic alien head. I do have, uh, you do find yourself a pattern that you might pull into, uh, Crow. So, um, I, thought, I mean, usually aliens are usually bigger heads, kind of pulls towards it, that kind of makes it alien. Um, but I don't know. That might be the fact that I'm using the same... Uh, I was trying to show that you could actually get some pretty different characters by using the same skin head, uh, but maybe I'm not getting enough um, variance from it. So I might have to switch up next class to do something else. So it just, um, Lowering, I mean, it just depends. If I'm pushing and pulling, and I just want to, you know, define... Um, like let's say if I wanted to pull this out to make him a super long head, I could just go into the lower, toss it out, and see how that looks really quickly. If I'm on my higher levels, then it's not going to sit there and um, be as easy to pull out and play with. So I go to the lower levels to define silhouette and shape um, and try to get the, the stuff. So let's see. Poor gigabyte when I get around 1 million points and it's really slow. Yeah, you gotta, I would definitely up that for sure. Very low. Yeah, 1632, working that that range. Because then that's that's the thing. You never want to slow down with what you're doing. So how's it going, Brave? Artists, you're inspired. Uh, count, there's so many artists that inspire me. Um, I mean, it's just like a, in... Let's see if I can... Well, the couple of guys I was saying was part of Grim with me, James Kane and Martin Verhoeven, I'm inspired by. That's why I wanted to join them. Uh, uh, Ramal Kaketa as well. He uh, does a lot of really beautiful shapes. Um, you know, friends of mine like Ian Joyner, Paul Gabriel from Pixel Logic. You know, what those guys could do for the tech that allows us to do this stuff is phenomenal. Um, uh, it's... Uh, Traditional, you got the Shiflet brothers, which are awesome. Uh, Steve Wing, Jordan Shell, uh, Casey Love, that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, there's a lot of a lot of inspiration that comes from everywhere, and there's just so many guys that do it. But of course, you know, those are the contemporary guys. Uh, you know, Chris Costa, that kind of stuff from MyLM. Um, but the, I would say, the, you know, the masters, of course. I mean, I studied Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci and all that kind of stuff, and taking a look at the forms. I mean, uh, Bernini, all, all that kind of stuff. When you're looking at you know, that's that's kind of what I grew up looking at before all the 3D kind of came into. And that's the great thing about the, the traditional stuff. It's your skill that, you know, you're kind of ranging on and building up on shapes and stuff. Um, um, but, yeah, there's there's so much. It's, it's just great. And that's the beauty about the Internet. Even though there's a lot of downfall towards it, you're able to sit there and be inspired by a lot more people, um, get a chance to, you know, meet a lot more people and see a lot more work because uh, there's just so much out there, to be quite honest. So I'm going to define this a little bit. I'm good, Spark. I mean, uh, Brave. Thanks for asking. Um, and when is the right moment to delete the lower... I never... Jesse, I never delete the lower level. You know what I mean? That's that stays there. Uh, what this does is it it allows you know you can actually go to all your lower levels and save ZBrush so your files are just a tad bit you know uh, easier to deal with. Um, but the fact is, is like I you know you, if I want the highest level, I just go to the highest level. But being able to come back and work on that is just um, you know just allows you to kind of play around with it. So let me define these shapes a little bit more. So this is the telescopic flesh things that I'm talking about. I'm gonna kind of just start again. I'm just swiping back and forth with my brush. I'm not really paying too much. I'm gonna go to the highest level right now because now that I'm doing some of the detail work to define what I want. So maybe I just kind of have 
some of those folds that kind of come down and define this eye socket. And again, I could probably, if I like certain shapes or certain things in the character, and I guess as Crow says, I just do the exact same guy over and over again. Um, I kind of, you know, you need to kind of go back and, and see why why you like those shapes. And so as an artist, I'll, I'll try to go, okay, I need to figure out what I do. I definitely do a lot of the sweeping, um, you know, defining my shapes out. Um, but that's just kind of like a habit of mine to kind of give quick skin folds and details rather than just going to a pure stamp, which isn't bad. And it's just I'm playing around with it, trying to find out. So... And I like this. I want to connect it. Kind of giving some, maybe I just have like tiny little holes down in there just to, again, the alien aspect of it. And what I would suggest, guys, is like you always kind of take a look at your objects upside down as well. Um, you know, just play with taking a look at all around the character and stuff like that upside down is a great way to see a lot of the shapes that might not be working i'm seeing a lot of these straights by turning it upside down i'm able to see it's very straight here i got this little look but i'm not really liking um i want to blend it maybe just back a little bit but i also want to go down to my lower levels and just wipe out some of that detail just a little bit because I want to sit there and I want to have some of the connections of it. So maybe I might kind of use that sweep to bring your eye down a little bit. the pinch tool to kind of maybe pull this out and round out this just a little bit more. I think I like how that bulbs out. I'm going to bring this back into the cheek. Maybe pull these to get the profile just a little bit more of a, a sweep from the design of you know coming up around the eye and back down. Thank you, Count. I appreciate it. Um, hey, Diver. Diver, um, I have no clue. I'm just kind of goofing around, showing some of the different... <laughs> and taking two heads and just kind of playing around with them. Um, okay, so I'm de detailing out this work a little bit. I'm coming up here. This is going to be one. I think I like this little sweeping your eye out. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably bury this even a little bit more in to give that socket... And I might kind of use this to kind of bring my eyes up. Just kind of taking that back a little bit. What are your thoughts on people going for jobs as sculptors? Uh, it's definitely hard. Um, I mean, anything worthwhile is, but uh, it can be done. I mean, that's, you know, there's a lot of good sculptors, but you kind of need to sit there and, and, like, I work in the film and game industry, so I jump in the games. I'm able to jump into low poly and unwrapping and texturing and stuff, and that's, that's a skill set that I get pulled on a lot, um, along with sculpting and creating creatures or whatever so it's um you know it's just a lot of work guys that's that's the biggest thing it's i wish it was like something easy but if you have the determination and you uh and you put your mind to it just don't expect it to come for a little bit especially if you're if you're new but i mean it's like if i showed you guys what i did a long time when i first started getting into 
ZBrush or whatever, even though I had a lot of traditional skill built up, it was it was not pretty. Not saying this is a pretty guy, but um, it was worse off for sure. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull back this little fold, I think. Um, sorry, me. Let me see. What kind of concept work? But tell us when are you going to tell us how to retopo these guys' characters? Okay, I'll, I'll show you that. Uh, let me finish this just up a little bit before I get to poly painting. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and kick that out. Uh, the babble. I think you know. Uh, I think the characters that even though I've used this the skin head, I think it's different. I'm, I'm just, especially tossing crap in into each other. Kind of really allows you to get a lot of diverse characters pretty quickly, depending on how far you push it. So, but. The problem is, as an artist, I kind of I, I have a tendency to flow. I, I have a tendency to just drag lines around, and so that's some of the look. Well, that's some of the look that people have liked in my work. So, um, so it's gonna bad. You're always gonna kind of want to try to do different things, but um, you know. Let's see. What are the main tools that you think are needed to sculpt a character? Uh, I'm showing you the basics. Uh, the main anatomy, understanding, life drawing. Life is a, is a good one. That that's a, a basic tool. That's a basic tool for any artist, to be quite honest. Um, and uh, other than that, it's just, you know, you don't need a specific brush to do a lot of stuff. If you see I jump around or um, good reference, you know, good understanding. I think that's time over and over and over again. Lots of time. So, okay, I'm just going to kind of... I think I'm pretty close. Let's see, the time is, yeah. Been at this for about 50 minutes, 45 minutes. All right, so once I kind of get shape, and let's say I'm pretty close to how I like things, and I, um, let me just finish out this one deal. I'm gonna bring this into, I think what Mia was asking, how do I retopo? Okay, so since I'm losing a few things on the eye, uh, like especially in this area, like I, I'm, I've been pushing and pulling a lot, so I'm losing a lot of detail into it. So I'm just going to kind of bury this just a little bit. And the problem, I, the reason I haven't shown you retapo too much is because sometimes it takes a little bit to get the details back. But so let's say I'm I'm happy with this head. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have the areas that I want, the areas that I don't want, kind of showing and not showing. Okay, from my design, let's say, okay, I like this one. I'm gonna make sure all high. I'm gonna save this sucker real quick, just in case we crash. Always get that pattern. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, thanks, bye. Yes, I'd had to be. Um, uh, beginners, I mean, you guys just, you know, get into the programs. Uh, and always study anatomy. That's my biggest thing I'll tell anybody and everybody. It's just, it's, it's studying from life is a lot, gives you a lot. You know what I mean? If, if, uh, if I just draw anime, I think I could do anime, to be quite honest. And there's going to be somebody in Japan that can kick the crap out of me no matter how well they practice. Um, but if I can draw from life, if I could draw the human body, I can draw Naruto, I can draw Bleach, I can draw a cat, you know, and I mean, of course, I want to have some of the references and stuff, but I'm able to um, jump around at the different styles a lot. Because um, I, I don't know, if, if you look at my website, I do Disney to death. I mean, I, that's my spiel. I kind of say I can, I mean, I came from Disney, so I can draw Mickey, you know what I mean? Um, and then I can draw an anatomy, so I draw a lot of skulls and the horrors and stuff. Um, so... Okay, um, I'm going to do this really quickly. So I'm going to go down to my merge. I'm just going to say merge visible. So what that's going to do is just going to grab whatever is visible. I'm not having the eyes visible because I want to use them as a separate subtool. I'm going to go to my merged section right here. Okay, as is. I'm going to make a duplicate because I'm going to use my initial one as a basis to pull from my details back from. I'm going to then go down to geometry. I'm going to go, and as you see right now, my geometry level is level 5. I'm just going to lower these real quick. I'm going to go solo. I don't need too much. Maybe 
high res. I'm just going to delete the higher. Because what I'm doing is like I'm going to compute. I don't need all that um, power jacks. Spray bottle. And I'm going to go ahead and just do 512 and just Dynamesh. And I'm, I have layers, so it was asking me. Um, Spray bottle. Sorry. He doesn't like the fact that there's a car somewhere on the street. So, um, as you see right now, it dynameshed, and it has two separate poly groups right now. Those were the two different ones, so it separated it. I'm just going to go ahead and just say group visible, pull them together. Okay, and then I'm going to now that I've got this dynamesh, I went to a lower level, just make it quicker. I don't have to have all those levels because what I'm going to do is I'm going to re z remesh it, make it. Um, so I'm going to go down z remesher. I'm going to make sure that my symmetry is on because this guy is symmetrical. And I'm just going to go. I'm going to take a look at the the detail here. I have a little bit of detail popping out, so I'm going to probably go to two and just hit z remesh. And while that's thinking, and as you can see, like this is where sometimes it could take time. Um, this is where RAM will come into handy and all that kind of stuff in your vid card. Um, uh, can you even like what kind of exercises you had to god tier concept artist <laughs> draw a hell of a lot 12 14 hour days um, there's guys that make me look like I'm four and I've been drawing a lot I've been drawing since the age of four um, you know w one thing I would suggest is, is draw a lot of circles as a warm-up we used to do this at Disney you just draw 50 circles and just to warm up every day you know take you know to loosen your wrists loosen yourself and, and just kind of and then of course trying to, to, to draw a perfect circle is a bitch so don't excuse the foul language <laughs> but it is not fun whatsoever okay so now that I actually have this one as you see I'm checking it's going to re take whatever I kind of had and rework the poly groups and stuff uh, you know to try to make sure that each polygon is, is pretty consistent and sometimes you see I'm gonna have and the more detail I'm going to have a little bit tighter, but this is a hell of a lot better than what I had before. So now that I have this, I'm going to make sure that I have this new object right here. Um, and let's just go ahead and rename it. Um, just call it Z Remeshed. Okay, and then I'm just going to go with that other object, my detail. I'm just going to go Project All. As you see, it's going to project the details. I don't have any poly paint on this right now which is fine and I'm just going to kind of and what I'm doing is I'm projecting and this is where it might take some time so I can answer a few questions as you see right there it kind of goes through it's going to I'm building the levels back okay I'm going to control D so I'm dividing I'm creating another de uh, degree and then I'm just going to project from my merged base onto this one now if I have any problems on the mer on the uh, the merge two groups just make sure that there's two poly groups to go ahead and just combine them into one because sometimes it kind of just has some problems yeah, Jack Spray Bottle. <laughs> so, um, let me see, like Sydney Nittle Page. Yeah, yeah, those guys are phenomenal. Uh, you just mentioned more of their other guys that inspired me. How's it going, side effect? Uh, Zebra Mesher, uh, Jesse kind of cleans up uh, to make it a little bit better. So, there you go. Go on. So, um, it just allows you to sit there and, and clean up whatever mess, because you're going to see the detail in the eyes once I kind of. Um, go back into it. I'm going to be able to smooth that over. It's going to give me a lot more detail. So right now I'm at half a mil. I'm going to go ahead and divide one more. You want to take a look at your original mesh, which was about four million for the detail work, uh, and that's because I had two million, two million together. It's combined. It's, it's so I'm, I'm dealing with about a two million poly limit detail level, which is fine enough. So hold on, girl. So let me go ahead and project again while I have to pet my dog. Um, so it, uh, it just allows, you know, I, I know I'm not going for 4 million. There's not 4 million detail into it because it's two sub tools that were put together. So once I have this um, done, I'm going to take a look at it, and it should capture every single detail that I had at those two merch pieces. Once I have that, then I can bring that back in and continue working and make it a little bit better. So thank you, Square. I appreciate it. Yes, and, uh, and ZBrush is a, uh, is a magic tool, just to be quite honest. Don't mess with the fairies, just accept it. So, but uh, as you see right now, it's kind of paused, and it's still working. It just sometimes takes, and this is where if you go up too high, you're just going to be sitting there watching a dead screen for the longest time. You're going to go, is it dead, is it not? And you, it's just better for you to just kind of go, I'm not going to kind of do it. I don't know if you guys can see this, my dog Nobu. So she's my, one of my older girls. So I got three dogs. This is to kind of keep me company. So once I have this one, I have a zebra mesh. I'm going to go back into my previous mesh right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and just to say a pen. A pen will drop it to the bottom. Insert will drop it one below whatever layer you're on to. I'm just going to 
pop it to the bottom just to separate. And so as you can see right there, if I click on this one and I click these off, my detail level is, is fairly close. Um, if I'm losing, if you ever wanted to just jump back up, you see right there how it kind of breaks down. This is, this is as high as I, I've gone because I pushed and pulled that so much and I kind of blended out. So as you see right there, I just jumped to my Z mesh to capture everything else. So I know my level is the same. So there's that head right there. If I click this on, if, um, if I'm jumping to my different layers, the detail level is going to stay the same as well. Okay. So now that I have this one, I'm going to go ahead and just save as. I'm just going to say this again to prepare. Yeah, it, it will get lag. It will get lag because I was computing. And so it was all my all my computer was pretty much taxing to get that done. So I apologize for the lag. So is it better now, guys? Yeah, it's getting back to normal. So that's that's what you guys are going to deal with. That's why I don't like to do this because uh, there's certain things you just kind of know, okay, this is going to take too much of my computing power to sit there and do it and, and go. So go on, girl. Oh. Make sure she has to go potty. But, so now I'm going to kind of go back to my eye section. So now, see when I smooth that out, see all that detail? I am now going to get a lot better detail than what I was kind of losing. So now I can go back in and finish up because I was pushing and pulling that head way too much that it just allowed me to not be able to get a lot of the defining details and stuff. Okay, one second, guys. I'm going to let the dogs out because she's now coming back for a third time. I'll be right back. Come on, guys. Let's go potty. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> she's usually been very good, but I think she's been drinking way too much water. So, okay. So now I'm just going to detail out this eye. So now that I have that extra detail, I can put in a lot more. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, they're good dogs. My uh, Nobu is just a little bit older, and she's kind of got like this... Uh, this like little fungus she's been fighting where she just drinks so much water so and of course she's 13 years old so she can't hold it yeah head humper parasite I, i'm kind of thinking it's i mean because i was doing that telescopic kind of thing and so i do see a little bit with these he's got more bug eyes so that's what i'm kind of i'm playing off of right now and it's and again if i if i like a specific head i can always kind of take a snapshot of it and then just kind of you know go from it um Dog, I must apologize. I decided to keep one in here because he doesn't really have to go, and then I let him out, and then I'll be back out I'm trying to let him in here in a second. So, okay. So now with all that rework to the zebra mesh and everything else, I have a lot more polygons in the right places to sit there and do extra detail work that you know. And this is what I always. You do. I, I haven't shown you in the previous episodes because of the lag and because of a couple things that, you know, crash possibilities and, you know, just some of the things that kind of sometimes happen. But um, so now, you know, when I did this, it's going to help my poly paint, any extra detail work that I want to sit there and bring in. And so, okay, and I'm, I'm just bearing, I'm, even though I'm not going to see this, I'm just making this cavity a little bit deeper so I can place that eye in there a little bit better. I'm going to play this up. And again, I'm moving. Yeah, no problem. They, uh, they drive me crazy, to be quite honest, but I guess it'd be boring otherwise because I'm pretty much here by myself until the wife gets home or the son. So, And as you see right now, since I merged those together, and that's why I was like saying just you know make sure to push and pull out some of those shapes already did, but now I can actually blend those because they're all connected as one piece as well. So that kind of will help. I'm going to kind of bury in this mouth, and I'm going to probably I'm going to turn his, his lip down here. Use in flat to kind of oops, that clay in flat 
to just kind of bulk up a little bit of this section. How's it going, Pro? Again, thanks guys for taking the time to join me today. Is there any further questions? I mean, we've, we've touched upon a few things that you guys kind of asked, but it's, again, just, you know, if I'm able to do it. Have a good night, uh, me, Barry. I take it you must be in a different part of the country. Or the world, what time it is. So I'm going to be able to now define out, maybe even do some, like, I'm using my damn standard to kind of give myself some... Yeah, it jumps. It uh, it jumps around. So, which I like it. I think we're starting to hit lunch in a lot of places, which is cool. I was trying to find some good time from where I I live to where everybody is at. I'm trying to find a nice balance. Okay, so since he's kind of feeling like a little bit of like a praying mantis kind of thing, I'm going to give him a little harder. Purpose, and I'm probably going to uh, let's define these upper lips a little bit, maybe. I don't know if I showed you guys this last time. A lot of times if I'm having problems with some of the feel of the face, I could actually just use a scale to kind of take a look. I'm going to kind of probably make his head a little bit deeper. Um, and maybe not have his head. Let me drop that. Because I'm trying to balance the side profile so I don't have too many bumps kind of going around. I can actually do it. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a good distance. I appreciate you showing up, me. So um, I think that works a little bit better. Uh, if I take a look at side, let me I'm gonna bring this eyebrow just a little bit. I want to kind of round this, and I think I'm just gonna kind of. With the shape, kind of like he's got one big eyebrow that kind of is quizzical, and I'm gonna okay. So A little too deep, too too much negative space in there that's kind of bothering me. So I'm just going to kind of treat this as it's like another, just to widen his eye bridge, uh, his nose bridge there. Sorry, not eye bridge. I think that works. Okay, so let's bring back in those eyes. And now, I kind of see that they got set back in there. So I'm going to pull them out. Uh, yeah, the website, I'm sorry guys, We Are Grim is, is coming, we're finishing it up and we will have these things soon. I also have some t-shirts I've done that I will be showing you guys probably in the next stream. Um, we've just been kind of really busy with a lot of stuff, but uh, the you can find my personal kits on my website and my shop right now, but those other guys uh, will be coming very shortly. We, ha we have a limited uh, set, so um, you could either email me um, in the meantime if you want to be the first to kind of grab. It definitely helps us out. We appreciate the support for sure. Um, and actually both those guys uh, for Grimm, James and Martin, will be at the, the summit this year competing in the hard surface. So um, and hanging around. If you guys got to get a chance to there, you can you can meet them. Very good guys. Uh, that's actually how we, I've known them for, for years online, their work and that kind of stuff, but of course at the summit we were able to, to meet up and stuff. Sounds good, me. I hope you you can uh, check it out. Stop by again. Appreciate the time. Um, 
this depth right here kind of going in from the eyes. I'm liking the eyes. And I could probably just bring them out. And we'll probably do something kind of funky. I don't think I like how deep this has gotten on the face, though. So I'm going to kind of... I'm holding down Alt, and I'm just going to pull them out more out to kind of balance. I want, I want some depth, but not so much that it's kind of going to... That's the only thing your your eye because I'm trying to have the viewer have you guys kind of like see more of this shape. Um, this little pocket with that pocket with that pocket was too much, so I think I'm going to just kind of reduce. little shape go down a little bit smooth that out I don't think that was it let's go back I'm not liking that I think what it is is that I'm going to oh yeah it's just it's screaming at me saying the undo okay. gonna make it just slightly taller I think the So it's just looking a little bit odd. I mean, even though he's alien. Okay. So I'm, I'm fairly happy with this guy. Um, you know, and it's not... Yeah, it, by... It, and you're right. You're taking out certain thing pros. Like, yeah, if I when I did this one, it changes the look of it entirely. You know what I mean? If I, if I sat there and I kind of used my pinch and I kind of pulled those in to where, you know, I, they sort of going around. Or if I... Did the in flat, which I do a lot, and I kind of start playing around with just seeing how that's going to look, or maybe I just inflate the face of inflate the face a little bit um, there. Uh, pushing and pulling things around will really kind of you know change. Having his ears go out like that makes him more comical. You know what I mean? Um, and this is where once you kind of have some things kind of going, you can um, you know try to play with this. I think. I'm going off the fact that he's kind of praying mantis isk. So. Okay. Alright. Any further questions, guys? I guess we're doing pretty good there for. Right, and yeah, by taking out certain things, he's going to be kind of like a little bit more human and stuff. So, um, but maybe I just need to sit there and define. Let me separate. Okay, that works a little bit better. Go down a little bit later. So I want to kind of, I think, have that sweeping nose. What do you guys think? A little better? And again, this is where you guys could keep kind of pushing and pulling, figuring out, see what works, see what doesn't. And this is where it kind of, you know, allows you to kind of take a snapshot. And what I do a lot of times, I'll just duplicate, and then I'll just kind of play with the different shapes and actually see what kind of works. So uh, you can also do um, to where, let's say, you, I'm not too sure about the, the thin of the lips. So you can come down here, and we can just make a either a layer of that. Or we can go down and we can go into our morph target and we can store that morph target. 
And then I can come up here and say, you know, do I like it with a little bit wider bridge, you know, of this face? Do I like it to where it's like that? And either I could just morph between the two, okay? And actually see what do I, what am I liking? Um, you can do that with layers as well too. Um, or you can, you know, take a snapshot or you can create different ones and do blend shapes between different creatures once you do different heads and stuff. It's just more just kind of trying out a few different stuff to kind of um, do this one. You know, and once you're, you know, on your morph target, you could switch quickly if you just want the extremes. Um, I'm actually going to go back. I think I like the fact that he is... More of a bug, bug shape, I think, and then uh, I'm make these just a little bit droopier. Okay, and when I make it droopier, I'm just going to kind of pull these down just a little bit to kind of make them feel like it's got some weight. I think I might um, actually extend this flap out, so I'm going to let me go ahead and just hit solo just so I can grab. So I'm going to take this. Let's go down to a lower level real quick. Okay. It's almost like he's got eyeliner in. Okay, and with that one, hold down control. So I'm gonna I'm gonna blend. I don't want I don't want it to be a harsh grab. And but I want to sit there and so let's just turn. Not much, just maybe. So now I can actually pull those down. I'm trying to make some funky, funky alien eyes by just doing the shape, you know, not by not having a perfect round eyeball. Okay. So it's almost kind of like getting pinched. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just like play with, um, you know, doing color work. Now the same thing with the uh, getting some of the detail into the character. I'm just going to go through and just kind of do the, the general paint. I'm going to go ahead and save as, and I'm just going to store this sucker real quickly just so in case I have any problems because this is where I'm snapped out. Um, the color is going to change a lot of this look, and this is where you can kind of go as I'm building it. doesn't mean just because I have one kind of look, I'm going to kind of stick with it. I might kind of go back and say, okay, this needs to be fatter, or I need to bring this bridge up a little bit more, or, or you know, even further. I can, I can start playing with that shape as I'm developing the character and kind of like, you know, what, because the color is going to define a lot of the, the creature. And the color adds a lot um, to it. So, I appreciate it, Bray. But no, it's like, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I wanted to give you guys something and um, just to create. And that's the thing. It's like, I'm just sculpting. I'm, this is my fun lunch kind of thing to where I'm kind of creating new creatures and chatting with a whole bunch of new friends. So, um, like I said, all are not going to be successful, to be quite honest. And if I... But I'm hoping that if I do this enough, when I come back to it, I might have one or two creatures out of 50 that I can kind of go, okay, I can take this for, um, for some fun or whatever. Okay, I'm going to um, go into just that, the Zebra Illustration Paint that I like. So if, uh, Bonjour, uh, Dieter. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and to my eyeballs first, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock them up, not to four million, definitely do not need that much for poly painting. And I'm gonna go and turn on my RGB. And I'm going to go to my drag and probably I'm just going to have a general one. Now, colors. I'm going to probably stick with a few colors initially um, as I'm building up. So my first one, I'm probably going to stick to like the blues, purple blues maybe. Um, my RGB intensity is at 100 right now. I'm going to make them a little bit. And I'm just going to speckle this out really quickly from my bridge of there so and I'm gonna probably go into a little bit lighter blue 
with my RGB, I'm, I'm going to mixing and I'm just going to start kind of pulling on some detail level. And I'm just stepping up because I'm kind of tr I'm trying to find the color. I might even go to a little bit of the greens, but I want to get some purples in there and some speckles. So right now I'm just kind of using this to kind of do some blends and build up the eyeball um, by kind of giving them like a little weird thing. What I the iris is going to define a lot. I think what I want to do with this guy. So it's going to make him the alien. So I'm playing with them. I'm getting a little bit of speckles. I'm working up and over, um, and I might actually kind of go. Let's find like a good, maybe more of a grayish. That might be too much. Let's go back to, let's just keep stepping on Maybe bring up more of the white. Okay, so as you can kind of see, I got some of the weird speckle. So now that I kind of have that, I'm going to go to just my regular brush. I'm going to turn off my alpha. And <clears throat> now if I do just, let's just grab like a, a black, right? Or some dark. If I just do this, we, we've seen that. Um, it kind of it, it makes it, again, it makes it human um, and comical because I'm just doing a little um, regular iris. But I'm going to probably, let's go more frog. So if I do this, then that brings it more into the alien. Um, and then maybe you can do it like even thinner. I'm not being precise because I'm going to turn off my... I'm just going to sh blend this just a little bit. Uh, I think they all like to shave. I don't know. There, there isn't a lot of guys so with the uh, eyebrows. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of give it like almost like a halo as I'm defining. I'm using this lighter color to kind of help define some of this and I'm, I'm hitting C to for my color picker to bring back and forth because I'm going to start picking out different ones so okay I'm going to blend okay so that kind of helps me define and hell let's give them a little bit of fake fake highlights and stuff we're going to we're going to put some stuff use the toy here in a second I'm going to go down and I'm going to to find up a little bit more details in the eyes. Oops. Missed. And I'm using some of that blend to kind of give myself, so it almost starts to look like there's a fake ledge going down in by doing this highlight. Kind of makes it look like there's depth in there. Okay. And you could actually, you know, do this too. Like, let's say if I want to give a little bit of subtlety of where, um, I think it's too subtle. Some weird veinage, almost kind of like this is the the veins of the eyes, whatever the vein of the eyes. Um, let's go back, turn that off, and then I can. Oops. Let's go back, pure black. So again, that kind of will help me make it look like there's a, a pit. Okay. Simple eyes, just something straight uh, to get done. Um, hey Sebastian, uh, thank you uh, for the kind words. Uh, he's asking about Sculptor's Pro. Um, I like Sculptor's Pro uh, when you when you kind of play with it. Uh, but how I work, I like to go up and down in the layers and stuff like that. So I haven't really, um, you know, I I do Sculptor's Pro when I'm kind of trying to get shapes for certain things or certain ideas. Because I can actually, I'm just doing a lot of the process I showed you with, that I broke up. But personally, I have a tendency to kind of um, like to just work specifically, you know, a specific way as I'm, you know, because I'm sort of doing the same thing in my own way. So I'm going to define this eye. But again, you guys could do exactly what I'm doing pretty much just in Sculptors Pro, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, go ahead and use cool thing about ZBrush is there's no one right way. The program is so powerful that you can do anything, just however you think about it. Well, I mean, you could do anything that they allow you to do, <laughs> I should say. So,
And and I think the reason that aliens don't have eyebrows is because, you know, that look kind of weird. So, but we can. I mean, we could. You could sit there and say, like, if I want to do this alien, we could. Um, because he's starting to kind of look a little bit towards, you know, insect. I could just quickly, um, you know, make in something like that. And then we can just, um, in here, we'll use Sculptors Pro. So if I append um, a cylinder. Again, I'm going to be sculpting, so I'm going to kick back over to my sculpt color. And so let's say I want to use this as eyebrow slash antenna, whatever. Um, kick over to Sculptors Pro. I don't have any geometry on it right now. And then I can actually just use Sculptors Pro to... move, manipulate, you know. The larger the brush goes, the more it decimates. Again, the smaller it goes. The... Now again, this didn't have, if I need to define more polys up, I could always, you know, go up a couple of levels and delete, and then that just gives me a little bit more to work with, um, just to start off with. But of course, by adding If I don't like, huh? Well, having problems with that one. Let's go ahead and just dynamite that sucker. <laughs> Get rid of it. And let me just go ahead down to modify topology and oops, not mirror and weld. Just go ahead and delete hidden. Some reason I'm having problems with that. I should be able to hold this down and it should be adding polys um, as I go. For some reason it's kind of acting very funky on me right now. I'm not too sure why. As you see right there, just it adds a lot more defining topology. This is really so if I get out of the Sculptors Pro, I should be able to go to smooth. But as you see, I got that really weird veining. It looks like it just got a little corrupted. But I could always use this as a idea. Don't crash. Okay, good. So we're definitely going more towards insect now. By adding that extra eyebrow slash antenna, it definitely has made it insect-like. Um, and of course, once you actually have that, then you can, you know, use that to push and pull. I want to make it more. You know, that's a, that's a great thing about ZBrush. We're able to do a lot of different stuff. Quick ideas. No, you didn't count. You didn't mess me up. It's, it's part of this is the thing is like, it's, uh, we're just, you're brainstorming, you know, I'm brainstorming with you guys rather than just myself. It's sort of, it's an attempt. The quickest thing I can do is just like, I could just go back and wipe that out. And as you see, I go back and forth things to try is just to try, you know what I mean? And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, that's why as artists, it's like, if somebody gives you an, a, you know, um, comes up and gives you an input, um, doesn't mean it's a hundred percent you should do. You, you check it out. If it works for you, it works for you. If they throw a fit, then they throw a fit if you don't take their, you know, sometimes, a lot of people might give you some crap advice. Um, uh, but sometimes it may give you the best advice you ever had. You just have to try it and actually see what works for you. Um, yeah, there are the feathered antenna, uh, and that's the thing, Pro, you can actually just, it's, I, that's exactly what I was thinking about, like the, the, the moss that actually had a really, you know, long, wispy thing that can go to it. Hey, Ben, how's it going, man? Thanks for joining. Uh, Ben's a phenomenal uh, ZBrush artist. You should check out his work. 
And there's a lot of good guys that jump into the, uh, the room every once in a while, guys, that you should check out. Um, so, okay, so now that I got that, um, eyebrows, so to speak, I'm going to go back to my, my color, and I'm going to, again, work from um, the back to the front. I'm going to probably pick a, a kind of a dark blue, probably because I'm, again, just like I separated before, he's more insect-like now, so I was thinking more of just the separating of just the bottom, and the. I definitely think I want to have this more towards whatever's going the eyes are going to be are going to be definitely separate from the back of the head. So I'm just going to go to my RGB. Um, I'm going to turn this up to 100 because I'm just going to start... Um, uh, from the thing with the color and then just go ahead and fill object Oops. and fill that object okay so I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna do what I've shown before I'm gonna pick this color and I'm just gonna start stepping up um, and as you see right there it's a hundred percent okay let's try that again didn't like that Let's go up. Let's go to a higher level. Make sure I'm on symmetry. And I'm just, just using a general alpha. You can you can start stepping up. I know that I kind of want you know the back of the head kind of be a little bit darker. Um, and then maybe down here, and I'm going to do some kind of blend. And I kind of have some of the face and the cheeks. So again, I'm just kind of trying to feel it out just a little bit to do. Let's go up a little bit more. Because what I'm trying to do is visually kind of separate my values to kind of get where I want the eye to kind of go. He's got this blue hue. If I look at a praying mantis, you know, you have the solid um, greens and look at them. They have beautiful praying mantis and insects. So when you're looking at that, they just... A lot of times it's for to intimidation, you know, to get a mate, all that kind of stuff. A lot of those colors will sit there and change it up um, for those reasons. So, hey Alex, thanks for trying out that thing. Uh, if you overextend, I mean, just you know. It's an overkill, you know what I mean? A lot of artists could do it. It's like you kind of like, you have something that you really like and you just kind of keep pushing to where you overkill it. I don't know how many times I've done that in Keyshot where I've had a good render setup and I thought it was like, hey, I finally did it and then I keep going and then I can't ever get back to that, what I had, you know what I mean? It's almost kind of like I should have just been happy with what I had and just you know move on. A lot of times you don't know what you have until it's gone. <laughs> it sounds like a country song. Um, but it's... Uh, you know, it, what, I, what I highly suggest, if, if you're liking a direction, guys, just take the time to just go duplicate, okay? Or clone, save that off, or do whatever. You, you will probably appreciate it, you know, later on to where in case something does happen that you lose something that you liked, you're able to, you know, go, you know what? I spent some time on that. I learned from that direction. It's, um, you know, I should have taken a right at, you know, Albuquerque. Bugs Bunny style kind of thing, okay? Hopefully some of you guys know who, who Bugs Bunny are, uh, is, whatever. I feel really old. Um, so I'm going to kind of probably go towards more... I'm going to start bringing in some browns, just get some of the warmths, because I've got a lot of cool in here, and I'm going to kind of probably... Maybe too much. Maybe grayed out a little bit. I want some of those values, though, on the face. Even though he is insect-like, I want to kind of blend... And I can go back once, you know, even though I'm doing this on this color, this might be too much. I could always come back and, and um, you know, hold back. If, I, if I'm, you know, I can just pull this blue and go, that's too much. And kind of, because um, I'm blending the two together. Like, you know, I want something darker in this little section. I can, I'm just tossing down ideas of color. And um, so it just allows you to, to do. Uh... Could you talk about surface anatomy, how to add in another level of muscle to the bones anatomy? Uh, can you define that a little bit more, Babu? I'm not quite sure uh, sure what you're meaning by that. Like if I, if, if, if I just want to keep adding another level to this character, or I'm just going to start talking some bones and stuff into it? 
Yeah, there you go, Brave. Good. That's all, folks. Okay. So now I have that dark thing going. Thank you, Oscar. I appreciate it. Oscar's another good, great artist that's uh, I met at the summit. He likes bugs. Also does uh, ZBrush live events as well. You guys should check it out. Okay, so now I'm kind of defining out. I'm kind of blending up. And those, I'm pretty just have a few colors. I'm going to probably go into the warming up even a little bit more. I'm going to start getting into the eye section here. And maybe I don't go red blue. Maybe I just go to where this is more of a, you know, a funky green, or even a yellow brown. So I'll try out a few colors, you know what I mean, in, in the blends, and see what see what kind of works. Um, you know, keep going until you get something. I'm just tossing a bunch of different colors, and I'm just hoping to kind of find something that uh, starts to inspire me in the direction that I want. I mean, I have a lot of, of uh, cool, so I definitely need to go into the warm, so maybe it's more of a orange, you know, the complementary color to blue, whatever, to, to actually really separate those, those things. So maybe it's not such a stark red per se, but it gives some of that detail. And I, I definitely want to probably give myself some darker values to play off of. Yeah, no mandibles. It's very smoochy. So you see with a couple of that, le that levels, that's sort of kind of helping a little bit. Um, I have some of the blue. I think I might go back to this blue, but I'm gonna go more towards a teal to get closer to the green. Because now that I have this value highlight, I kind of want to bring that together a little bit more. And kind of Again, color could take quite a bit of time. I'm just trying to find. Uh, yeah, no, this year I'm not going to be competing. I, I competed in the last two years. Uh, I had a great time, met a lot of great people, but um, I'm going to, yeah, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let other people have the gun to their head. It's uh, very intimidating. A lot of skilled people coming in there for, but drawing for three hours and trying to get something out is pretty difficult. So it's just kind of like it's starting to look. Um, and, of course, I did the first one. It was very, you know, with that one, it was like baboon. I'm still dealing with the colors. So I'm going to probably take it away from that baboon look by just kind of pinging some of these colors a little bit more away from those two, you know, the red, the blue. So I'm going to blend these suckers in a little bit more. Let me see, I guess, uh... Oh, yeah, because I left that nod. I doubt that. It was a definitely harsh fight. For sure. So now that I've got that blended a little bit, it's looking closer to the praying mantis. I'm going to start putting in some, like, the highlights, the details and stuff to kind of start defining some of these things that I kind of like. So first I'm going to concentrate on the eyes. Um, I'm going to probably go... Just to, and I'm keeping it about 50. It's, you know, you just kind of, that might be too extreme. I could always blend it. Make sure when I'm holding down Alt, um, I'm actually just, I just have my RGB on instead of the Z pad as well. I'm going to knock that down just a little bit. Because I wanted to find out. And I'm blending the two characters together. I mean, the two colors together. And I'm just going to kind of,
trying to find some make sure it dings my sculpt that I had before and blend it out and again this is just how I usually color and play around with things again this might be just repetitive of what I've done before but it's you know you kind of you can't do everything new a different direction every single time because then you'll just always be continually doing something new and never <laughs> progressing um, past you know getting something done because you're always going to be trying different things and and having trouble with it but um, so I do have a pattern that I kind of pull back into what feels comfortable you know find something that's comfortable I guess I should say and then try a few things new don't try everything new every single time because it's uh, you'll never know what is going to be the best for you until you kind of slowly over time let it play out if that makes any sense again sometimes guys it's hard to to think and chew bubblegum at the same time hey Martin <laughs> Martin is from Grimm uh, he's the other he's the better character artist than, than uh, you know, the group that I was telling you about makes me look good he wants it scarier so there you go <laughs> he does really cool scary stuff um, I want to see more oops of that I'm gonna bring more in the orange too to kind of lighten this thing up oops. I'll go back to my RGB thank you Ashley I appreciate it very much oops Getting some weird tweaks off that one. Okay, so I'm going to just highlight a little bit between these flesh pieces. And I'm just going to blend them out. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it, RT. Appreciate the kind words. So, okay, so now that I have this one, I'm gonna, I'd like some of the start of the, how light it is, I'm gonna come back into here and I'm gonna start to define out some of the highlights here in my brush is starting to skip for some reason and it's kind of like I, I think I'm trying to make him scary and he didn't like that thanks Martin it screwed me up and I'm just kind of just having fun trying to find color trying to find shapes trying to find details um, you know some will work some will not so you know Again, that's where I was like saying it's like if you have you have these different levels or what you kind of like. Let, let's you know, let's say if you like I like that pattern, but I'm kind of curious about another pattern. Go ahead and just you know make that duplicate. And a lot of times I I might define out something in the color um, that I can actually go back to sculpt and add in. So let's say. I'm adding in some details in between this right here, and I'm kind of like saying, oh, I want to try some crow's feet, or I want to try some extra wrinkles around this section. Um, excuse me. Uh, you go back in, and I could just switch over to sculpt, uh, like my damn standard, whatever, and then I could just go ahead and go back to my sculpting and, and bury that. You know, just separate those two lines a little bit to give myself some extra little detail that I'm going to put into my texturing. Uh, now I could also, uh, I'm going to go on the higher level. I could also, while I'm doing this one, turn on my RGB at the same time and you know pick a color that. So when I'm doing, I'm getting the color in at the same time. Uh, I, I have a tendency that I like to do one or the other because um, I'm and you know thinking of different aspects of what the shape is going to be and or what the color is going to be. Not not both at the same time because uh, I'm trying to find and. 
Okay. All right, so I'm going to switch back over since I've been doing... I'm going to start picking out some of colors that I put into his eyes to kind of blend in. And I'm go back to the blending option. I'm going to start to bring this up a little bit higher. Hey, Ashley, um, uh, I mean, from nature, a lot of times, um, inspiration from different artists for sure. Um, but, um, you know, taking a look at things that are kind of, I mean, nature has a lot of freaky stuff. So, like I said, I'm thinking of a praying mantis. Um, uh, at this point in time that if I was kind of going down this direction, I might kind of go, what is, you know, give me some different wacky praying mantis and start taking, you know, take a look at them as I'm going down this insect. Um, you know, I was, for a while there, I was looking at, I was creating a lot of fish. I don't know why the fish creatures just kept coming. Um, so then I was like, all right, if I'm going to, I guess I just got to get out of my system. So I started taking a look at the deep sea creatures and taking a look at, you know, that kind of thing and pulling, pulling some ideas from that. Um, so it, uh, I don't know, there's so much around us that you can find inspiration. But the, the reason I was kind of showing you guys some of working off of, you know, the, uh, the face or an actor kind of stuff is because I was trying to allow you guys to think about what's a great way to start. Well, you can just start by using some of the details and stuff off the face itself. So, okay. I'm going to... Go a little bit higher. Um, artsy, I, I never have, <laughs> to be quite honest. I, I mean, I'm 48 years old, guys, uh, and, and uh, my, my friends make fun of me because I'm like the old dog. And But um, it's, I, I don't know, I've always had the energy. Uh, and if I'm, what I find is that I, if I'm bored by something or if I'm, I'm not feeling it, I, I always have other projects or other things that I will jump onto. Um, so a lot of times I'm working on two or three projects plus my own stuff because I jump around a lot um, and I work a lot of hours. So I'm usually, uh, I work seven days a week, um, about 14 to 18 minutes, you know, 14 to 18 hour days. Um, you know, it, uh, I'm getting, it's getting harder to get up in the morning, but <laughs> to be quite honest, but um you know, I just I just sit watch TV all day and I sculpt, so it's not really that hard. Um, you know, or if I if I find something that you know if I see something on Instagram or whatever or you know, art station, I'm like, oh crap, I gotta I, that oh, that's really cool to do. Um, or there's a challenge, you know, Jamie or Jaime from a uh, um, ZBrush just put out the you know working from like an old master working from. Uh, block in you know what I mean uh, I haven't done it yet but it's sort of like it's just uh, I mean it, it's making me want to do it I guess I should say even though I've got quite a few things on my plate um, but this I think I, I wanted to do for to help out if I could and if I can help anybody else that was interested okay so I'm just going to detail out a few of these you know some of what I had going into the face and the detail and again just kind of playing around because um, what I'm trying to do is get something quick down to give me ideas um, and then you know if I, if I was going to take this guy further I would I would definitely keep working back on the sculpt try to figure out certain things it's kind of hard to create and you know something in two hours and, and have it be a success all around um, but um, you know just something to kind of you know get down sort of like I was telling you before like drawing circles you know what I mean to warm up and um, go towards it thank you I appreciate it um, it's it's like I said it's fun I, I would not want to do anything else and it kind of baffles me that so I, I do see a lot of people that go you know oh, I've only drawn like three hours today and I'm tired you know I'm like 
that's just ridiculous. You kind of, you're just starting. <laughs> so, um, if not for yourself, because I, I mean, when I was at working on Age of Empires, and I was like, you know, um, uh, I was working on a really cool game, but I, you know, I was um, blowing up buildings and then, um, you know, creating like little icons for the game, and then. Um, and I was doing the dominance war and then, you know, when I was at home at night and, you know, jumping around because I, I wanted to do more than just blowing up buildings and icons and stuff. And this is where I wasn't really doing a lot of character work. Well, in the game industry, I wasn't doing a lot of ca character work. I was, I was a generalist. I was all over the place, um, because of my traditional ability. I, I was everywhere. Um, but, uh, so if I don't, I'm working on a project that doesn't quite inspire me then I'll when I'm done with that I'll you know work in my own personal you know direction or a thing that I want to do that does so but it's it's really awesome when you get a, a project that allows you to do both uh, I, I like Zebra just because it kind of gives you a little bit more of you know has like a little bit of blue rim a hue to it uh, it's very close to the um, material of the uh, skin shader but it's just got a blue. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just make this, just work with the material. I forgot to do that, guys. So let me go ahead and just do, OK. So that way when I switch back over, I have that extra. Rip. OK. Let me do this one real quickly. Go back to here. darken down now you can do two guys where you you have uh, you can use the masking to get like the different crevices and stuff like that um, sometimes I, I have problems where it crashes on me so I'm not gonna while I'm doing demos I'm not gonna give like a little demonstration of it but if you need to you can go down to your masking here and you just have different mask by features um, your amid occlusion your you know cavity all that kind of stuff I'm just gonna kind of quickly go into those areas and kind of push and pull back things. Again, I'm pushing and pulling back certain values that I want to kind of concentrate on. I'm not going to do any kind of like certain red lips or anything like that, even though I have it here because I want the eye to be focused more in that little section. And I'm pulling colors that I already have. Uh, so I'm going to keep with the warmth, but I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And I'm blending. Okay. And so now that I got kind of like a pretty good direction of this, I'm going to go ahead and just I'm going to import like a different uh, alpha. I'm going to go to that. I've shown you guys before like the elephant skin. Um, so like here, if I show you guys, like I have a lot of different. Um, skins or whatever that kind of go from it so it just allows you to kind of I can push and pull and think of different ones if I want more of uh, oops didn't like that one at all so let's go um, so again we're gonna blend I'm getting some of that skin now some of the skin direction that I'm getting, like if I hold down Alt, you're going to see the, the negative of it. You'll see that. Um, I might use that to kind of, if I turn this right up, you'll actually see from that direction. I might kind of pull in some of that um, directional. I'm going to use to kind of turn around certain directions. And it's just adding a little bit of visual detail to my color. Okay, okay I've darkened up quite a bit, so I'm going to probably go into, now that I've got that dark, I'm just going to lighten up the certain areas again. Maybe bring it into the... Now that yellow might be too much. 
as is, so, but I, I kind of like that tone. So I'm going to use it, but I'm just going to pull back just a little bit. Now, I could always go back, and, and this is what I do a lot of times. I, I go back, if I had certain details in there, I'm going to go and rework those details. I'm going to go down. So now I'm just bringing in some skin variation to the head, along with color, okay, to darken back some of those details that I want to separate from the front and use those to blend into the, the, the lights that I kind of had going on in the face. So right now I'm just kind of, I'm using this one general alpha to kind of make it consistent. So you can see I kind of start to have because of the light underneath there, it just kind of starts to give me a, a, a blend that helps out. Okay. So, and if I if I want to go to the extreme other ones, you know, I could still use that texture to add a whole bunch of skin folds and details. Okay. Now, this is really white. I think I want to kind of sit there and warm this up just a little bit in the inside. Maybe not that much. I think I want to darken. Let me go back to now separate and darken this down just a little bit. Go up to the dark. So what I'm doing, I'm just kind of burying those details. And I'm going to pick this highlight white, and I'm going to just hit the rim a little bit. So I'm using that to separate shapes. And let's go with this dark red down in here to blend out. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to kind of get back into. I mean, traditional is so hard. There's so many things to do. Um, your internet resources. I mean, there's just a lot of good. I would. I mean, Freedom of Teach has a great um, sculptures. There's a lot of good studies that you can actually pick up that you don't really need a lot of money. I mean, you can actually just uh, find a really cheap skull. You know, just make sure it's anatomically correct. I mean, there's a lot of great ones. Um, I mean, you can have just. I mean, references just up at the the wall. You got you know 3DSK and a couple other stuff. Just do a lot of research and just you know study slowly. So um, having having just a few pieces of good reference and just having a lot of hours to it is better than having thousands of references uh, references and not doing any any work itself. So um, yeah, it's starting to look like a creature from the Avatar brief. <laughs> so which was a great movie. So. Um, Absolutely, K. Bye. Thanks. I uh, appreciate you stopping by. Ditto. I appreciate it. So, okay. even though I got that kind of dark in there, it's a little bit too dark. Let me go back to here. Like it's it's um separations just a little bit too much. So I need to blend. So now that I got some of that going, and I'm pretty much close to being done, guys. So I'll just start asking questions. I'm going to go to a different alpha real quickly, and I'm just going to kind of find some something kind of, well, he's kind of insect. So let's try like honeycomb. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick um, this high color, and I'm going to go pretty high as well. And let's just lay it out. Okay, that doesn't seem to work. Now, I might actually use that here, though. Just give a little bit of weird skin variation. Again, that's just going to break up 
some on the skin. If I pick up a different color and I intermix it, you just you see the honeycomb, but it's not so prevalent. You kind of knock it back in certain areas, so you just have some highlights. And again, I can go to a pretty high level and bring that out, and then pick the colors around it to kind of you know slowly pull it back. So. Because I'm just using that color to break up some of that. As you see right there, like, it gives me a little bit of odd alien look. And then I can just grab and blend where I need. Okay. I might actually kind of... from there and since I'm pushing and pulling different levels I get some weird weird effects pretty quickly <laughs> well remember I said it was tell it was like a telescoping eye so maybe it just kind of shoots back in there um, you know like it like the eyeballs just kind of go away. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So I'm going to turn on my... I've been sculpting without my perspective. Kind of helps a little bit. Okay, so now I got color on it, then as you can see right there, it's going to change. You see certain things that are starting to pop out. Grabbing my attention. So I kind of was doing kind of like a little brain feel to this sucker. And again, what I plan to do, guys, is that every single piece that I have actually done for the, the demos, I'm going to go back to those creatures and I'm going to spend a couple more hours on them and just kind of flesh them out a little bit to kind of see which ones I work and see, you know, take it a little bit further. So it's not just like creatures that I'm just going to toss in my junk box or whatever, or, you know. And then that way I'll just I'll put them on Instagram so that you guys have uh, viewed the the demos with me. Then you can always just go back and see um, where my thought process kind of continued, or you know what worked, what didn't. Okay, so what time is it now? It's three o two. Is there any kind of questions, guys? Because I'm pretty much I think I would, I would probably rather answer a few. Um, few questions while I kind of you guys have seen me do the same thing over again and I'm just going back to painting um, some of the detailed lines and stuff so so ask away Or don't. <laughs> I'll just keep sculpting, I guess, and then I'll keep painting until you guys come up with something. I know it's funny, it's like usually one or two people kind of ask the questions and then sit back. I have a tendency not to ask a lot of questions either. most of you guys like um, just general students or is there some guys that are professional or kind of curious to see the, the breakdown of some of you guys can you make another one the skin base effect is DL'd from uh, side effects are you talking about the material that I'm using the zebra 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Right now I'm using the materials uh, Zebro. Um, uh, Zebro two, three. He's got a couple different ones. I mean, like, like this one is Zebro eyeball. You know what I mean? So, like, let's say if I want to use um, this material right here for the eyeball instead of what I actually have on the um, So I want it super shiny. That's just my, that's the material. So if I go back to my, my general one, he's really super, like the material map is really environment high. This one is just, I like Zebro 3, just because it seems to have like a nice little um, look to it. And then um, I'll go from there. No, no worries, Ashley. That's what I've done it before too, where I jump into other people's classes and or just it's difficult to kind of stop what you're doing. Yeah, and I, I actually, hopefully, the sound is a lot better than the first couple of classes that I was doing because um, I was using a really nice mic that I have, and I mean, it looks really cool and it's quite expensive. But um, I guess OBS was having issues where I had a lot of feedback, so I apologize. I was not aware. Um, hopefully I fixed everything and, and um, I've been getting a little bit better OBS that's why I don't know if you guys noticed I had that little up in the upper right hand corner of the screen upper left hand corner I should say uh, you'll see my ZBrush logo in the different kits and it's kind of like you know um, kind of uh, animating in kind of a way uh, I'm getting better at um, OBS I'm trying to learn some of the different things to make it look fancy um, but uh, I was trying to I didn't realize it was having such a horrible feedback because I didn't watch my demo until someone mentioned that they wanted to watch but then they couldn't because they were out. Uh, I don't have a Gumroad uh, page actually. Um, uh, are you talking about um, where you can purchase certain things from me or, or are you talking about like classes or whatever? Um, I, I have some friends that have done Gumroad, I just haven't got into it yet. Um, and I've done a lot, I, a lot of times I've done mentorships, or whatever, just one-on-one. -on -one. So you guys just hire me for, uh, or I've had people hire me for the time. And then I just kind of like, that way I can, you know, they focus on what they want to learn, uh, rather than me just kind of going, you're going to, you're going to learn this. I would rather, as a teacher, I like to sit there and, um, I know everybody kind of has like a different, different thing they want to learn, you know, um, and then I can just focus on, okay, well, this is, this is how you might go about it. Um, cause I had a lot of people try to, they want to break into games, um, uh, as a character artist, um, that's, it definitely takes a lot of time and there's, it's very few character artists really, to be quite honest, compared to a lot of the different, uh, different environment artists and everything else. That goes for a concept as well, very few concept artists. Um, yeah, classes, I mean, it, that's where, yeah, you just drop me a line. If you're interested, you guys can drop me, I have my, uh, email up on the page. Drop me a line. We just, uh, I usually black out two to three hour times. Um, and then we just jump into a Skype and then I can, that way I, you can see my, just like I'm doing right now, you can actually see what I'm doing. You can pass on your work. Um, and then I can just go over top of it, kind of show you how to go about it. Um, I've, I've taught a lot. I used to teach for TAD and for Dallas Community College and, uh, UARTC online, I have classes, and, and what I found, or what I do find, is that it's, it's for you guys, you need to do the work to actually understand how hard it is, and what, you know, you kind of, it's, it's, it's like you have to, you have to walk up the hill both ways in snow, eight feet deep, to actually understand how difficult it is to school, you know, um, and, uh, and if you don't have that understanding, then me just kind of going, yeah, this is how you go about it, uh, you kind of lose some of that, you know, understanding. Because um, if I just go, oh, I would have done this, and I just do the, you're just echoing something I've already done. It's um, you don't really learn as much, in my opinion. So, but for you guys to create something, and then I go, here's what I see, and I use the eye, um, you know, my developed eye to kind of like pinpoint a few things. It works a little bit better. Because that's that's the main thing. Technology is the easiest thing you'll come across once you learn it, and once you learn the tech, and don't worry about the final product. And then it takes years to develop the eye. Years and years and years. Hell, I'm still developing it. So, um, I, 
but for me to sit there and kind of go, this is how to go about it, you kind of see some of the pitfalls. Because I've literally had students who've spent like hours and hours and hours, and I'll I, and I'll do it in five minutes to kind of like, hey, you could have just done this because you were you were kicking yourself basically because you missed this step that would have made things so much easier. So I actually had one student challenge me in class. He did a tricycle, and it wasn't a bad tricycle, but um, I tried telling him it was at that point in time it was like eight thousand something, eight thousand five hundred polygons, and I said I could take this make it in half the polygon limit and make it look better. Um, and he said, no, I couldn't. And so I spent the class actually showing how I would go about it um, to where, you know, I did. And that's the, um, and it was because uh, I just showed him the thought process. You know what I mean? You didn't, you didn't need to spend, it was because you, I used normals to kind of do a lot of the trick to the eye and everything else. And that's a lot of it. It's just understanding certain tricks or ways to go about it because you've done it before to make the process look better, or the final product look better, I should say. Yeah, I do do mentoring. Uh, right now, I've, I've, I usually keep about one or two students mentored um, uh, going at a time. Uh, so I do have one available slot for it. Um, and But I'm actually talking to the guys from Grimm to actually open up a, like a grim mentorship because the combined we have like 50 years combined between us and we have a lot of different styles and a lot of different thoughts that I think would be very beneficial to kind of help. Um, I mean, you kind of I don't know having someone that actually you've gone through a lot of the stuff that you guys are trying to go to it's sort of like a battle. You know what I mean? If I've ever, if you know you see the person coming off a plane and it's been through the war then you kind of have a they know what they're talking about a little bit more so I like to pass that on because one teaching you guys that are coming into my industry or our industry um, is better for our industry so that's how I take a look at it I don't like it to where you guys are just kind of thrown out of the nest without wings um, if that makes any sense okay so I'm going to kind of I'm going to do one more sweep of color. I'm going to warm this up quite a bit. Maybe go to the oranges. school um I've, I've taught enough uh, to be quite honest so um and honestly it's kind of you know to me it's the you know it's a lot of work um and the the problem i've had and the reason i like to go to the mentoring uh way of things now is because I've had a lot of students not want to put in the work and so uh, usually when i was teaching at colleges and stuff like that i was having literally like 70 percent fail ratio of the class because they just didn't want to do the work um and that's the thing it's it's kind of when you have someone that um has that dedication that fire that's sep that's that's the biggest part of the separation between you and the other person um you know talent talent builds upon its, itself but it's like you have if you don't have that fire or desire or anything else like that it's like it's very difficult to teach anybody in anything else beyond that is to learn takes hours and hours of work. Okay, don't dig that. Okay, I definitely think this guy over top of the other ones that I've done so far, the things I'm not liking him as much, but you know, it's um, it's something. So it's kind of what I what I'll probably do is I, I'll probably go back and I'll kind of like continue this guy because um, I do like certain aspects of it. I am. Um, I like that eyeball better. All I did is just I went back into that sub tool and I just undid it by one because I had the toy eye material on it and then I added the zebra eyelid and it was just too much of an environment hit. Um, but now that I have this, um, I definitely I definitely see more of you know where I can actually go back into the character and kind of um, you know 
if I played with a face and did a lot of different things to see what I like, you know. Do I want to balance out to where, do I like it like that, to where I'm starting to bring out the cheeks a little bit more, to where I'm now kind of making it more feel like a praying mantis, because a praying mantis is shapes, or his face is pretty much, you know, more to where it's got kind of the flatter the head, kind of like the straighter kind of stuff, and, you know, that will make it more evil or, you know, more praying mantis. So I could start doing that um, now that I have some color, and, of course, by having that color onto it, will change the sculpt, but then the sculpt might change the color. So it's back and forth, back and forth, just try to, to see what I kind of like. But um, Because now that I actually have this, um, you know, hell, I might even kind of, you know, add some add some of these spikes. And, and how to do spikes really quickly, guys? Like, let's say if I just go ahead and just do... Did not need to do reduction in it. So let's just say I want to add it a little bit I'm going to flip. You can just push and pull those out. You know, so then you can just, that way you, you have them, you can kind of do a quick mask flip and just add some spikes. So let's just say I wanted to, to make that thing just a little bit sharper, you know. And if I want to reduce it, Go ahead and just knock it back. So, hey, Jonathan. Hey, Fawcett. Actually, Jonathan Fawcett uh, is a, a very good artist. He was a student of mine a long time ago, um, and now he's over at Gearbox. Um, so he can actually you can ping him and drop him a line. Or that's the thing I always say: if you guys are very interested in, in me helping you guys out, just drop my you know previous students. Um, you know, you know, and I, I'd rather have them kind of tell you guys. Um, and that's the one thing. But I, I am talking to the other guys at Grim to kind of help out. Because uh, I definitely think it's important. So, thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Um, Queen 22 pen display. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I'm working with the Cintiq uh, 21 UX. It's old but good. I have a tendency to like it. So, and I've looked at the bigger ones, but it's just like I, I don't know if you guys could tell from my room. I got a lot of crap. So uh, it's kind of <laughs> I'm running out of room. I have to go to the ceiling uh, to put more stuff on it. So, um, but uh, yeah, it count if it works it works um you know and this right here guys if if um again if i if i don't like this um uh, you know i could just go back to before i did it is that another trick i could either use the layers to kind of pull back or um mask go down a level two or whatever and just kind of pull those back if I don't want them quite extreme or shorten them up a little bit so yeah, I paid Jonathan to say that <laughs> but no it's um, I think the thing is when you guys are looking and learning um, the best teacher is the one that you understand to be quite honest you can I've seen a lot of phenomenal artists um, but they just weren't able to express to a lot of, you know, they might have trouble expressing their thoughts or their, their breakdowns. And I've seen guys that are, you know, um, are phenomenal explaining and their, their work might not be as strong as some of the other guys I've seen. It's it's really whoever you find um, that you understand pretty quickly. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, and definitely the direction you want to go. Um, I, I know I've had a lot of students that wanted to do a specific thing. Um, you know, especially like I want to, I want to do Blizzard. You know what I mean? But I think I've mentioned this before. I'll, I'll, those guys at Blizzard are phenomenal uh, traditional artists. You know, just phenomenally skilled. And so uh, they're not doing Blizzard work to do to get into Blizzard. You know what I mean? So uh, be aware of that. Uh, so that's why we say life drawing over top of pretty much anything. Okay, I've got some of these spikes here. If I have spikes going up here, I need to kind of bring them somewhere up here. So I might just kind of. Um, I want to put them here on the side. I might. Let me try it. Again, just try. That's too big. I might try a few. Uh, what's happening, guys, is if I'm putting my... I'm uh, touching down. It, uh, it's blurring. and I'm not meaning to yet. Okay, so let me just... And I'm just kind of going with the flow. Just little ones. D 
to give myself some like a little bit of visual. Hit. Now let me go un undo it. And now since I actually have that, I'm going to probably go to, just because visually I'm having trouble seeing them because I, um, they had a certain color. I'm just going to go to my color and I'm just going to brighten these up just a little bit. Okay, and then I'll blend back. Maybe not that much. Actually, I kind of like them on the head here to kind of lead your eye. So that's sort of like those um, eyebrows, but I'm not too keen on these over here. Hmm. Having trouble getting rid of this one. Oh, that's why. Uh, make sure you're... Yeah, my... <laughs> I turned off my RGB, I mean my uh, Z ad for my, which is default, it's always on. Still waiting for the Venmo to come through? Which, on which, Jonathan? On the, the teaching? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Venmo, sorry, my bad. Venmo is the uh, pay program. I, I use PayPal, but yes, I got it. I'm a little slow on the uptake time. Um, okay. I think that helped, um, and, it, and again, whatever design or whatever, a lot of the creatures, at least I personally like to do, is that if I have some kind of flow or design, I try to carry it around the character. So if I have a few of these little spikes, it might be kind of best to kind of like, you know, pick them up on on the back, you know, just a few things to kind of say, okay, this, um, that design element is, ah. I swear to you, I'm barely touching seconds. Okay, having trouble. It's not wanting. <laughs> it's like no, I'm not even really touching it, and it's kind of just going. So, is there anything else, guys? And I give up my, my personal email. Uh, my email's on there. If you guys are interested, please. I mean, I, I appreciate the time that you guys took to come and check out the, the demo. If, uh, if you have any further questions, I will try to definitely answer as best I can. It might take me a little bit of time, so please be patient. Um, but, um, you know, feel more than, uh, be more than happy to drop me a line anytime. But I think if that's it, guys, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I save this sucker. And, um, I, like, again, I appreciate you guys checking it out. But I think if that's it, unless there's no questions that are going to come in, I'll give it a minute for you guys to, because I can't see if anybody types into this thing. And I'll just take a look at this again. So yeah, I see a, th a lot of things wrong with it. There's some things I like, but you know, I always want to kind of seeing some of the shapes that I like, don't like. And again, I did make. I have to start taking a look at colors. Very difficult for me. So I'm having a tendency to kind of within my creatures, I'm creating things that are kind of very similar to the, the color tone now. So I um, I need to kind of make sure that I'm kind of pushing into the different colors now. Once once you have this, you could, um, again, make a snapshot duplicate. And so you can call this guy, um, oops, not all low. So let's call him red blue. <laughs> and then um, turn that sucker off. And then just, you know, pick a crazy color. Let's say if I'm going to go into the greens or whatever and start and then just go... Um, you know, color, and then just maybe maybe go for the RGB and just make it down just a little bit. Um, so I'm starting to blend, keeping some of that detail into it, and then I go, okay, I've got a little bit of the green into it, and then start kind of coming back in and then just kind of playing with that color stuff. So, but uh, have a good one, Jonathan. All right, guys, thank you, Ryan. Welcome, uh, Ryan Engel, uh, Matt Mullen. Hey, buddy. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Matt is uh, another badass artist from Sideshow. 
You should check out his work. Phenomenal concept guy and sculptor. Thank you, Count, for showing up and stuff. So, all right, guys. Well, I will hopefully see you next Friday if you join us. Uh, and join me, I should say. I think pulling my dogs in there for a second. So thanks again, and uh, hope to see you guys soon. But thanks for joining.